I have never been so frustrated by a review of a game before. Not even because I disagreed with the broad strokes of his conclusion, just that he got there by such entirely wrong premises. Let It Die is flawed. There are important aspects of the game that it's not only possible, but likely to go 30 hours without even noticing. The only way to know what each of your character's stats actually do is buried in a tutorial entry entitled Mingo Head. So before I can even talk about the game's flaw, and what I think are very important questions of ethical microtransactions, we have to settle how the game actually works, because it's very, very obvious that George simply did not know how to play. And really, that's more the game's fault than his. Let It Die, like most grindy games, is about methodical progress. A ratcheting effect where you get stronger by overcoming challenges, so that you can be strong enough to overcome the next challenge. Think of it like a roguelite cross between Monster Hunter and Dark Souls, and you're almost there. You play as a consciousness that's capable of swapping between an expanding stable of host bodies. Bodies which can gain experience and level up, but can also be used as tools to gather resources, to improve your collection of craftable weapons and armors, and ultimately progress up the Tower of Barbs. Let It Die uses a point-by stat system of leveling, familiar to any Souls fan, where a pool of EXP is spent on the choice of investing points into a stat, at an increasing cost based on how many levels you already have. The level is therefore just a number representing how many times in total you've leveled up any stat. Put 10 points into Strength, you're level 11. Put 5 points into Vitality and 5 into HP instead, still level 11 but with wildly different levels of survivability than the one who put it all into strength. Let It Die also uses classes for its fighters, eight in total, each with different specializations and stat priorities. Strikers for strength and HP, shooters for dex and HP, tanks for HP and vitality, and so forth. These priorities represent not only their starting stat values, but how many actual points of stat gain the fighter gets for each level invested in the stat. Finally, Classes are described in a rank called their Grade. Grade represents both a level cap and a general multiplicative effect on priorities and starting stat values. This means if you were to compare a max level Grade 2 Striker, level 49, and a level 1 Grade 5 Striker, the Grade 5 would have literally 7 times as much HP and more than twice the strength before taking a single level. Progressing the grade of fighters you have available to you is one of the four core progress tracks of the game, and it's accomplished simply by climbing higher in the tower. The other three being crafting more powerful gear, unlocking character augmenting decals, and getting up to a floor with an elevator. A run in Let It Die begins in the lobby of the tower, where you can outfit your fighter in whatever gear you've found blueprints to craft, and then either set out from the lobby escalator up to floor one, or head to the elevator to the highest floor you found and activated the panel for. Using the elevator costs coin based on how far you're traveling, and here's the first free-to-play incentive. The Express Pass allows you to ride the Luxury Express elevator for free. It doesn't unlock any additional floors for you, you still need to have made progress to the elevator panel yourself, no longer costs extra coin to get up, and importantly, back down again. The elevator charges in both directions. Your run, then, will consist of you embarking up into the tower, making whatever progress you can, and then making it back down into the lobby again to bank your earnings, turn in whatever blueprints you found, heal back up at the fountain, and set out again. A run can make progress on all kinds of metrics to be successful. Farming up coins, hunting for blueprints or crafting materials, making it to a new elevator floor, or maybe just finding a hidden stamp machine. All of these are progress in their own way, and it's what makes the game effective as a grind game. Being stuck on one track doesn't preclude you from the others, and all of them will pull progress on anything that's lagging behind. Is your gear too low? Climb the tower and you'll find new materials and new blueprints. Forget about upgrading the old gear, just make new stuff. Can't climb because you're getting destroyed by the enemies? It sounds like your gear's too low. Try crafting and upgrading the stuff from the place you were in the recline. Everything in Let It Die breaks. Every purchase is always a consumable, just on a varying number of uses. 
Your armor will break from damage you accumulate floor after floor, and your weapons will break as you swing them. They'll break a hell of a lot faster if you use their special moves. Picking up any given piece of gear isn't progress. It's not permanent. The progress comes from getting a blueprint for that gear so that you can make a new one when it breaks. You climb the tower to unlock higher grades of fighters and find new blueprints and materials so that you can make new gear to level up your new fighter to climb the tower and unlock more grades and blueprints. That's the loop. That's the grind. And it isn't even until pretty high up the tower that you even realize it. It's possible to hit floor 16 in the second Jindai fight and not have ever learned what your stats do, or why crafted weapons are better, or why you'd even care about higher ranks of armor. Resistance percentages are the same. It is possible to simply bang your head at a wall of a fight long enough that you beat it without ever learning how to have done it better. And at this point, I think it's where I need to talk about the question of ethical microtransactions. Let It Die has death metal tokens. You can use death metal tokens to come immediately back to life at the spot you died, with a few seconds of invisibility to get some cheap shots in. Death metal tokens can be obtained free from daily login rewards or quests, but you can also just pay for them, about 50 cents a token. Now, what experienced players in the game will quickly learn is that spending those tokens to revive from a death is one of the worst ways to use them, compared to the incredibly important expansion of your storage locker. But it is a way to use them. Imagine if you were playing Dark Souls, and the blackened screen right below the red blood letters of You Died was a small prompt asking if you wanted to spend 50 cents to have not died. Back to full life, fight resumes right where you left it. You're just back up and healed again. Take another try. EA CEO John Ricitello once famously said, When you're six hours into Battlefield and you've run out of ammo in your clip, and we ask you for a dollar to reload, you're really not very price sensitive at that time. Nothing in Let It Die forces you to buy that token. There is no boss fight whose strategy for overcoming its special attack is just go ahead and soak it and then token back to life. In my first playthrough, I spent four tokens on a single boss fight at level 10. Why? Because I had six of them and I hadn't learned anything about how to play yet. And damn it, I just needed a few more swings. Really, that is the unethical part of the microtransactions in Let It Die. It has nothing to do with pay to win. They're not pay to win. And it's not a way of punishing people who don't pay by making you grind. Paying cannot reduce the grinding in Let It Die. The grind is the game. But the moment of, come on, you've almost got this, just one token, exploits an aspect of human psychology in a way that seems downright predatory. Were it not for the fact that you could spend tokens to reverse your death, the game would be so much better. Not because it would play differently, but because new player expectations of the game would change. Souls games have bosses that seem completely unbeatable at first try. There must be some trick, some exploit, a different way to do it. But the sound knowledge that no, it isn't a trick, you just need to learn the fight. That learning the game and playing it well is the difference between progress and stagnation. That progress is only gated by your personal mastery over the challenge. And that's vital. As soon as the confidence that you can do everything in the game without paying any money has been lost, all rigor and discipline is lost with it. Oh, here's another of those quarter munchers. Free-to-play games suck. Sneaks into your vocabulary. People are sensitive to feeling ripped off. They're woefully inept at actually sensing genuinely being ripped off, but when they feel like they're being taken advantage of, they get angry. There is a level of trust that a player has when playing a game that the challenge will be fair, and that investing yourself in mastering the systems is worthwhile. Microtransactions of free-to-play games shatter that trust. I really enjoyed playing Let It Die, but like George, I also hit a point where I didn't feel motivated to grind, so I stopped. Same reason I stopped playing Monster Hunter. I just couldn't bear the thought of doing another Goldbeard Cadius fight. 
Some people really enjoy the treadmill. If World of Warcraft dailies give you warm fuzzies, I cannot imagine a level of grinding and let it die that would bother you. The rest of us, it's really worth playing. Give it a few hours. It's worth every penny that they never asked for.